Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a Northwest based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy, and bulky items, collections, and drop offs. Fast, safe, and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Billy Moore podcast. And today's special guest is Sicarius McGrath. How are you, my mate? All right. Right, so former gangbanger, now we're in Manchester. What happened? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, from an early age, 15, I was involved in petty crime. Then 21, about 2001 maybe, uh, ended up getting involved in firearms. And then it just escalated from there. For, from that, I was involved in running and management of brothels and ever, most types of crime. So what happened? Where, what contributed to your, your life? Sort of going down I that path. I, I was brought up near Lowbrick Road um, <coughs> and Sands and Lane when I was a kid, and I think it's just the the area. Uh, and some of my family members were involved in what they was involved in. I think it was just a contribution of factors, and then end up getting involved in like motorbikes without a license, and then it just escalated. Then it begun to be a petty thief, like stealing cars and uh, vans and whatever, and, and breaking them and selling the parts, and then from that. 2001, I ended up going down south, uh, bought a load of firearms off these agents, come back to Liverpool, and that was just, that was that. And so so you, go, you go down south, you buy a load of firearms off these agents, was that, um, did that kind of like catapult you into, yeah, like it, in, in, the, in the gangs, and that's when I become, I started manufacturing them, um, I started manufacturing and selling them across the country. And that, uh, how does that work? How do you manufacture? It's different now, but you used to be able to purchase them. Like uh, they would deactivate them, would reactivate them, or would reactivate blank fires. So, for example, you go to a shop, you buy a blank fire for about seventy quid, eighty quid, uh, and you replace the barrel, and then you you'd you'd, manu- you'd make ammunition. Um, say it was an eight millimeter blank fire, uh, you change the barrel, and then the eight millimeter blanks. You'd refill them and put a steel steel head on them in a, in a press. So you know it, it, it went f- it went from it went from it, yeah, it, 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 thanks. It went from it went from one one thing to another and it, it escalated. And from two thousand and one onwards, I was involved in firearms until I ended up going to prison in two thousand and four. So that sounds like a really like complex, uh, cre- you're quite creative there by the chance of it with. You go making, yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. It it took skill, but once you once you learn it, it's just like a mechanic. A mechanic knows how to repair a car, but to me and you, it's going to be hard. Once you know how to do something, then you, you know it becomes it becomes your your thing of expertise, doesn't it? Yeah. So you get a gun for seventy quid, blank fire. Yeah. You um, replace the barrel, make the ammunition, uh, and then we used to I used to sell them on from like three fifty upwards. But we would do like ten at a time, five at a time, stuff like that. So it was very rarely someone would come for one. It was always people who'd come and purchase them in bulk, and then they'd sell them individually for for more money. Some of some of them used to sell them on for like fifteen hundred quid. Yeah. But but at the time, back in two thousand and one, um, two thousand and two, firearms were a lot cheaper than what they are in the current in the current day in the current market. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. they, I think they were a lot easier to source back then because not as many people used them. They, they were they were quite rare. You didn't really get. 2001, you didn't really get the young gangs in Liverpool running around with them. You get the odd shooting at, at the older generation. So then I was about 2001, so what, what What? was that? You know, what age was you then? You were I think it was 20, 21. So a young kid. Yeah. You sure bounced about Breck Road. Yeah, the, uh, everywhere, but it, it was, um, I was getting bullied off these doormen in town. Yeah, they was terrorised me, they took a car off me and they used to fucking terrorise me, so that's why I got in, that's why I originally... Purchased the firearms. So it's all in, in, in the Liverpool yeah, City Centre? Liverpool City Centre, yeah. There's was, there was a big family of them. Um, they own nightclubs and that. And it was them. I crashed one of the cars when I was a kid. Yeah. Didn't know who it was. Didn't have a clue who the fuck they were. And from that, they see me one day, a couple of years later. And um, I ended up ramming police in it. I ran police on Council Farm. I was getting chased by an Amiga. I think they were armed response or traffic. Um, Council Farm, I was, it was this BM 8 series. I think it was or 7 series. 
and spun round and ran the police, got 15 months jail for it. That must have been about 96, 97. Now, um, years later, like 2000, 2001, sorry it was, I was in a car wash, um, in my car, getting a car wash, and all these doormen just surrounded me. All these fellas around me took my car off me. Big hombres, were they? Yeah, they were all big juice heads and fucking uh, boxers, and kung, kung fu cage fighting, and fucking <laughs> kung, kung fu cage <laughs> fighting. Just, mix yeah, match just, just full, of, full of juice. But um, yeah, but they, they were half heavy family. They were a big, well known family. They owned nightclubs and bars and that, you know what I mean? So um, yeah. from that, I went and met them. And there was this, uh, this, this one called Sean. Just like uh, He was like the boss. He's old now, he's finished. Um, but he was like the boss. And he, he threatened to cut me from off. I've still got the scar there, if you look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it, yeah. When I went to meeting that night, he threatened to come, I'll, I'll kill you and this and that. I was shitting myself. I was just a kid. This big firm of juice heads wouldn't terrorise me. So I think that's where I went out just off key. In the end, I just couldn't take any more. When I'm just, that's the only, I, I went thinking straight. So, and then the, there were some times when I go shopping with two, two handguns on me. Went into Waitsmith one day with two handguns on me. I don't know if you remember Waitsmith back then. Yeah, I remember uh, Waitsmith. I went in there and, um, as, as you go in, there's these metal detectors. And I remember the black security guard, the security guard on there, and I thought, did these go off? I'm, I'm going to be fucked. But I thought, fuck it. But I, I didn't really... Was you paranoid? Was you, was you, was you vigilant? Yeah, but, the, but when, when you was carrying firearms, it gave you that security, it gave you that sense of security, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you know, <coughs> you know as well as myself, mate, if you pull out a piece and you point it at anyone, mm. right, the fear that, that, that puts in there, yeah, definitely. Well, that, look, I've been shot at least 15, 20 times. So, have you never been it? No, nah, I've, I've, I'm full of. I've, I've been it with shrapnel with, with with the things that come off come off the gunshots. You know what I mean? But yeah. I've been it with that. But you know, it's one. It didn't used to fear me. I was getting shot at every week in Liverpool. It didn't. It didn't. Tit for tat bullshit, do you know what I mean? Just for different reasons. Was that a regular occurrence back then? Was it just like just shooting? Nah, t- t- 2001, it was rare. You didn't have these young kids, as you've got now, running around with guns. You didn't have that. Yeah. You didn't have these young... You did in Manchester, it started earlier. But in Liverpool, it started like... I don't know. Well, I went away in 2004 and it went going on then. We, we, yeah. we was more or less the first group to be doing that back then. I think uh, we were... Uh, I think here, yeah, there was like the, the Pepper Hill and the Gooch up in Manchester that were... Um, the, Dod- 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 the Dod- Dodson, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gooch, but they started in the 80s, 90s, but Liverpool yeah. was late starting. But don't get me wrong, Liverpool have caught up. There's some dangerous, dangerous kids there, and there's no dispute about that. But when I went away in 2004 for the guns and the shooting, you didn't get all these kids running around, flying around with guns. You didn't get it. So you went away for you went you went away for guns and shooting. Yeah, manufacturing. Um, they found a loaded one next to my bed. I think it was a bed or something, and uh, I shot some soldier in uh, Birkenhead because I was meeting some girl at the time from Birkenhead. <coughs> And um, come out one day, half asleep. And these three lads put it on me, saying, your scouts couldn't get off our estate, just talking shit. So, so I had to say, look, just give it a miss. My tyre was stabbed on my car. I had some old shitty rammer, some big Rover 600 or something. Um, my tyre was stabbed. And then he started just wanting to do Kung Fu in the street. One of them had some little fucking Swiss Army knife. He pulled whatever. Uh, I don't even know if he pulled a knife out. It could have been a spoon or whatever. You know them Swiss Army knives where yeah. they have all the tools or a sc- I don't know what the fuck. Well, fucking saying open yeah, it out on you. Yeah, it was, it was embarrassing. But um, so I, I pulled the thing out and said, "Look, fuck off! What are you going to do with that?" So I just shot him. But I, I went thinking straight away in the right frame of mind. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, where did you Where did you hit him? Went through his shoulder. But uh, yeah, I, when I, when I was in jail for that, the girl who was meeting at the time. Mm-hmm. End up the lad who was shot was called Gareth, but I made up with him after that. I spoke to him and said, Look, when I was in jail, I've rang him because the girl I was with at the time ended up meeting him and getting with him in yeah. a relationship. So the lad who got me jail ended up shagging me bed at the time. But look, a it's bit of calm in it. It, it, is, it is, but you know, I, I spoke to him when I was away, but it must have been 2007, I think it was in Rail. Yeah. Um, and and I, I, I rang her and he was there with her and said, Look, put him on. I spoke to him and said, Look, what's happened? What's happened? I'm sorry, but. He apologised to me, I apologised to him, and mm. we, we, we was laughing and joking. We mm. said, fucking hell, the, the way things have turned out. You know, I shot you, you got me jail, and now you're in bed with me bed, and I'm on the phone to you. It was a bit of a fucking, <laughs> it was a bit of a mad one, look, look, there's no hard feelings. I've seen him afterwards, well, I spoke to him afterwards, and, and there was no, there's no we're never going to be mates, but it was put to bed, that's it. Yeah, well, this is the first time I've met you, and, you know, you're a big kid, you know, from in your appearance, you're, you're what, six foot something? Six two, I think. Yeah. Six two. Oh. You know, you're a big hombre. Did you have any fighting skills back then? To a point uh, where you I could f- never had a fight in my life. I think that's why I got into guns. If I could, yeah. have, if I could have had a fight, <coughs> then uh, 
Even when I went to jail, I used to get fucked all the time. Especially when I was skinny, it was about 10 stone when I first went to jail. For them firearms. I used to get fucking weighed in all the time because that many people had upset. Yeah. I used to, t- I was terrorising cunts. Mostly, in, uh, I used to terrorise a lot of kids over in that Birkenhead. And when I went to jail, they just all put it on me. I had more hits than the Beatles. I was fucked. Screws, prisoners, smackheads. Everyone was just coming at me left, right and centre. Just, just you know fucking, mean? just, just, a, just a coffee yeah, here. Yeah, because he upset that many people. But when I got out, I remember I went on a man for a firearm once in 2003. And I got fucking got a hard time in there. I was only, I was only on a man for months. And I got out and I put them under pressure. All, all the kids who were putting hits on me, I put them under big, big pressure. And, you know, I'm not going to say the names, I don't want to embarrass them, but uh, they were from Bergen Edden back, back then, 2003. They were heavy kids over there. They could, they would like the main. They went into guns or not, and they were just fighters, you know what I mean? So but it's almost 20 years ago now, isn't it? Yeah, it is 20 years ago, but I remember in 2014, I seen one of them, some big, baldy juice head guns. And um, I pulled up next to him, I was with these foreign kids. And I said, How are you, mate? Do you know what I mean? And, and it, it, it obviously it put, it put put them on the back foot, but look, I've got I've got no I've got no issues with them. We've seen people since, and it's water over ducks back by guns. Because by guns, you can't hold grudges forever, and I think they feel the same. Yeah. Did you have any? Um, was you financially motivated? Was it? You know, obviously you, you've got a gun factory. You know, and you're involved in brothels. Yeah, obviously, but it was all at different periods. My gun factory was, was 2001 to 2004, and uh, but. I was making all right money off my work, making great money. I was making d- decent dough off them, but at the time. But another thing we used to do was rob people's Rolexes, watches. Do you know what I mean? So um, we'd wait for drug dealers. I know it's a scum. Listen, looking back on it now, it was uh, it was a scummy crime. I, I was I was a piece of shit. There's no doubt about that. But we, we'd wait by the house, and when I come in, I just run up and put a gun to them and take the watch. Do you know what I mean? So it was that type of. And I used to get all type of fans from Liverpool ringing me saying, "Give the watch back." I'd say, "Fuck." Do you know what I mean? Because when you I, I, don't get me wrong, if they would have seen me and never had nothing on me, they would have weighed me in. Because some of them were heavy, heavy fellas, big, big fellas in the city. But um, a lot of them were from Anfield. But uh, yeah, they, they were, so were, you were, just pull up on them. Yeah, just pull up on them, creep, creep up on them. I remember the one in Anfield that we done, the very first one I done. He was in a golf. What the fuck was it? It was like them fast golfs at the time in like two thousand and three. T Z A T Z I. That was Doesn't really matter. It's can't even remember. It was yeah. a decent golf anyway. He was like, he was like a bit of a boy in Anfield, and he and he just give fucking, I think he gave twenty five, twenty something quid for a watch, all diamonds, caked in diamonds. I was waiting outside his house for nights. I was with this bird, just waiting for nights and nights. And then he pulled up one night, caught him, creeped up, put the thing to him, said, "Give me a watch." Took his watch. Did you um, have a belly on? No, nah, the fuck, just got a bare face. <laughs> but it, it, that, that, every time I attack someone. I, I was a comfort tax and drug dealers, and every time I tax someone, not once did they have my face covered, not once. But a lot of the stuff I got the blame for, it weren't me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I, I used to, um, 2009 onwards, I was mixing with a lot of black kids and Asian kids down south. Yeah. And a lot, sometimes we'd bring them in to, to, to tax people. And so every time a black firm would tax someone or an Asian firm, I'd get the blame for it. I remember Frenchie was in Anfield, the devil. Fucking, uh, he was in Anfield one day and I got a phone call. What's Frenchy doing around here? I said, what the fuck do I know? He said, well, uh, you bring them around here. I said, well, just because he's black, mate, doesn't mean a fucking... Just because I... It's bollocks, but everyone used to... A lot of the shit I got to blame for, I never even done. Have you had any dealings with uh, Stephen French? I spoke to him. I wouldn't, I, we're not mates. We're not. I've got no issue with the guy. He, he, he does what he does. And, yeah. You know, he, he seems he seems an intelligent fella. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. everyone says he's this, he's that, but... Look, everyone says anything. People are quick to make assumptions about people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Are you a grass? Look, it depends. It depends what you define as a grass. But let me start from when I was a criminal. No, I, I, I went. I, I used to get shot at every every other week or every week, should I say? I've been stabbed. I've been fucking. You know, there's many many attacks on me and many attempt attacks, and it was a tip for that. And not once was there anyone in jail because of me. But you know, now I've changed my ways. And if he had trouble, I'd, I'd go through the correct procedure. I'd go to court and, and I'd, go, I'd go to the police. That's the way it is. Uh, and, and there's no dispute about that. Now, people say that's a grass, but on so be it, I'm a grass. Uh, it is what it is. But I, I'm not interested in people's criminality. It's not like I'm one of them on the phone to crime shoppers or we, he's doing fraud or he's doing. I couldn't give a shit what people do. It's none of my business. I don't mix with these people. So I'm not here to inform the police of what's going on. I couldn't, I, I couldn't give two shits of what's going on. But. A grass to me is a criminal that informs on his fellow criminals. If you're a legit nine to five, if you're a legit person, then if you're a productive yeah, member of society, exactly. Yeah. That's what the police are there for. Now, if you go and beat up a lollipop man or a traffic warden, 
you're expecting to ring the police because he's a normal nine to five type of guy, or you beat someone up who works at McDonald's, they're going to ring the police. So if it's the criminal, so in the criminal fraternity, for example, you're saying like, so you've got a co accused, right? You're in court. The police have hit you with a few questions. Mm. You've give them a little bit of information that will kind of make your sentence a little bit linear, lenient. And extend is that much? So would you class that as a crash? Hundred percent, it is. Yeah. Uh, and and <clears throat> there was a rumor years ago when I was a kid when I got next to the gun factory that I blew me two two coldies up. Let me just clarify this, and and this is fact. They got nicked before me, months before me, and they give guns were recovered with my fingerprints on that they said were never recovered. Do you know what I mean? So when I got interviewed, this is the facts of the case. I couldn't give a shit if, if I grassed them up. I'd say yeah, I did, yeah, but yeah. they put me in. Do you know what I mean? And when I got interviewed, I said, I'm going. I said, I, I went to look at the purchase this in St. Domingo Vale of whatever. He, he's given the firearm in. Do you know what I mean? So they put me in. I, I went on the police radar. I was just low key. They put me in. They put an operation on me. The police were watching me, firing guns in Crocs of Woods. And they put the operation on me. They got Nick three months before me, put my name in, and sent their cousin over to my stash in Birkenhead, where it, where it was my, at the guns. He said, I want a gun, he's come over. Um, <coughs> he said he needed it because he had shit with someone or whatever, or he wanted to buy it, I can't remember, but he's come over to Birkenhead, this gaffing, this place in Grangemount, and then he went, oh, I'm all right now. That was to get me address of where I was, and then I've given that to the police. He put an operation on me, and the police come through my door, fucking heavy arm, please. Uh, so if I grassed them up, I'd say, yeah, but I generally never, I was a kid, I was about 20, 21. I think when I got, no, I was a bit older, I was 23 when I got nicked with them. Um, I got four and a half years for one gun. They got five and a half for 30 firearms. Combined, they got nicked with 30 guns. One got five and a half, the other one got a six. Yeah. So, you know, it demonstrates who put it in. And my me, and me last case, what I got, 2016, me code D, who's the main fella, some Asian fella, he got less than me. I got longer than him. I got eight and a half, he got seven. Yeah, I read a few of the comments on, um, on somewhere I can't remember, and it was talking about you. You know, it stated that you were put in prison in 2017 for eight and a half years and you were released in 220 mm. and the comment section was all about he must be a schnitz he must be a grass yeah. how can he go to prison in 217 get out in 220 now i obviously i know yeah. I, I was thinking to myself straight away is this kid being on remand prior uh, to uh, that uh, look i went away in april 2016 yeah i got sentenced in i was on trial for three months um, I got sentenced on December 2016, the 14th, and I got out in July 2020, so I served four year three months. I went away in April 2016 and got out in July 2020. Two days you're after so sentence. I got eight, eight and a half years, I served the full half. So I, I weren't released early, I weren't, uh, it's bullshit. People make assumptions, it's easy to assume, it's easy to make assumptions and be an armchair critic and be an armchair expert, but it's bollocks. Yeah. When you look at the facts, the, the, the facts are the facts. Yeah, you're right. And I, uh, well, as far as grassing goes, look, uh, uh, and even on my social media, I've, I've got like over 1,800 professionals. So a lot of them are police, MPs, councillors, um, probation, a, a, a lot of professionals. I, I must have it over a thousand police and ex-police officers on my social media, um, and the rest are psychologists, criminologists, and they're all professionals. And people say, "No, nah, he's a grass." He speaks. Of, Look, I'm, I'm, I've gone legit, and I'm trying to make society better by helping kids out of gangs. So mm. I, I, that lifestyle, I'm using my expertise from my past to make things better for the future. And, and I admit, I'm the first to admit, I was a piece of shit, there's no dispute about that. But I'm not that person no more. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's good that you can own up to it and take responsibility and be accountable because, you know, you know, Liverpool, especially Anfield, where you're from, you mm. know, there's a heavy gun presence, in, you know, back then and still probably now, you know, Liverpool at the minute is, is fucking up in arms. People are getting stabbed left, right and centre. The shooting's regular, you know, still, you know. 100%. Uh, you know, you're, you've, you've lived that life. You know, did you ever fear, did you, was your family ever saying to you, what are you doing, why don't you stop? Or was you ever, did you have any friends or you know, girlfriends that were like sort of concerned about your lifestyle at the time? Or was you even like, was you even asked? Was you just I like... Did, I, 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 didn't, I didn't give two, two, two fucks about it or whatever. I remember these Irish firm rang me because there, there, there was a heavy fella from Liverpool who was putting pressure over money. He had all properties on Smith Down Road, taxi companies and stuff like that. Mm. And um, this Irish firm rang me and said, look, give me every family member's address. I was living in Bootle at the time, Merton Towers. And he gave me every family member's address. And uh, I said, the only address you haven't given me is mine. 
And so we carried on putting pressure on them. They, 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 they end up giving us a uh, five or ten grand. They met, I met them at Chill Wall Five Ways, and they end up speaking to me. There's another fella called some black fella from the South End called Mark. Heavy, mm. heavy fella. You probably know who he is, but I don't want to say his name on this. But mm. he, was, he was part of them black firm in the 80s, 90s, the, the heavy ones, you know what I mean? And we were putting pressure on some other kid. He, he got in touch with me and went, Look, I'll, 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 come, I'll come to your house. I said, Mate, you don't know where to live. And he went to this other lad's house who was mates with, and the lad shitting himself, ringing me, saying, Mate, leave it. I said, Fuck. I said, We're in that game. We've just got to face it. And that Mark ended up becoming, I wouldn't say he'd become my friend, but at Christmas he come and drop like 15 ton off for me. So we ended up becoming. Yeah, I'd say we did become friends to some degree, do you know what I mean? But he was a heavy fella from the South End. So, so we had some respect here by yeah, the side of Yeah, he did, because yeah. I, I was adamant. Even though I was a piece of shit, I stuck my ground. And especially on the phone, I'd say, well, that's not happening. If you would, if, don't get me wrong, if you would have got old me and I had nothing on me, I would, I would have shit myself. It's one of them. But he was a heavy dude. But at least you can admit that. Well, yeah, I'm you not know. one of these people that says... Oh, I'm an R case. A, B and C. I, I don't portray myself to be an R case. Don't get me wrong, because of my size. Now, now I'd probably do your average divvying, but you know, I'm, I'm a mere fighter now, far from it. Do you know what I mean? So, and, and that's why I used to resort to firearms and uh, and whatever we used to resort to. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of people, even though I'm disliked in Liverpool, I'm hated. Uh, a lot of people still, well, I wouldn't say a lot. There are some people that still have that respect for me because of our wash. You know, and we were taxing grafters, so a lot of drug dealers like me. Even when I was last away, do you say, "Nah, you scum, mate." You used to rob drug dealers, but what you've got to understand. And these are kids on the lands that were shouting at when you were away. Nah, they, they used to speak to me. They, 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 even some of the kids from Norris Green who we never used to like. That we bike on people. I, I spoke to them in jail, and they were decent kids. There was a, there was some one of the main kids from Norris Green. I spoke, I met him in jail, and I spoke to him, and you know what? He, he was a decent lad. I, I I liked him, but before that, I fucking hated them and didn't didn't even know him. But a lot of grafters used to say, "Nah, mate, you were you, you were scum. Why you used to tax people and why you used to have people off of, uh, for work and and down and what?" And I said, "Look, you was a drug dealer. I was a thief." Every criminal's a scumbag. You're a bank robber. You go in a bank and put a gun to the cashier. You're a piece of shit. You sell drugs. You're a piece of shit. You're a robber. You're a piece of shit. Every criminal's got its victims. But I, I, I used to. My victims were other criminals. And where do you frown upon that? So you were in the same league as like, uh, like, like Frenchy, uh, yeah, in a yeah. sense, because yeah. that's. But I, I, I didn't, I didn't call myself the devil, and I didn't have Jack Russell snapping at me heels. You know what I mean? But <laughs> look, and I'm not, I'm not trying to lower Frenchy's credibility because he seems an alright fella, but. Uh, I was a bit different than him. He, uh, How was he different? Come on, tell us. Because he was more like big seven foot ten, bl- fucking black fellow or whatever he is, six foot ten. Yeah. Black fellow who can do kung fu and karate and he'll karate chop you and Chinese burn you. Whereas so I, so he was physical. Yeah, he was physical. He was a physical big black guy. Yeah. Wh- whereas I was the type of the little rodent, the little ten stone rodent to turn up at your house with a thing and, and put you under pressure that way. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. couldn't fight me way out of a paper bag. I had missing teeth. I was ten stone. I looked like I was smoking crack, but. You know, uh, what, what to say, it was a dangerous gun. I, I was reckless, uh, and I didn't really give a fuck. Was you, was you unpredictable? Was yeah, you, it was unpredictable. So what was your biggest ever graft? So, you know, because everyone would like, you know, I'd like to know, you know, what, you know, you want to get out of these uh, Listen, me, 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 touches. Yeah, but my biggest, the biggest one, I think, was about 70, but it was between, like, a thousand and ten of us, so we had about a pound each. Yeah. We ended up with a corner. I think I ended up coming out with a corner. That's all after you break it down. Do you know what I mean? But... Everyone think, oh, you had that for 70 grand. And, but, but and how many? It was a few of you. It was a few of us. Yeah. And then the people that put us on it, the people at this. But, but there was another one I put these black kids onto that got 215. They never gave me a penny. But uh, it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? So, so you're putting people onto the graft and you're yeah, getting the, bumped the, on the. On nah, the, 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 the it was, I put these black kids who, who were, half, they were half heavy kids. They've come to Liverpool, met them, showed them what, what, what's what. But one of the lads he brought, some baldy black fella, has backdoored me and backdoored them. Because we went and met these black kids, we, 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 we went and met them in, um, where the, I don't want to say where they're from, do you know what I mean, but when we went and met them, they all turned up apart from this baldy one, and they never turned up with nothing on them, so if they would have had the money, they would have turned up with things, because they were keen, they were keen bastards, they were game as fuck, proper gangbangers, mm. and he turned up with nothing, they were genuine kids, I, I seen it, but this baldy one, this baldy gun, backdoored them and backdoored me, listen, it was years and years ago, it was like, fucking many, many, many years ago, but they had 250 off the fella they gripped, and, uh, I never got a penny. The 70 that we had, I think, was around 70. It was shit. I think I come out with all 15 of it. There was a few pictures in the um, in the paper with you wearing a bally with a you know a bundle of cash in your hand, and then there was a there was one with the a snake. Sh- the snake. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, but you know the story behind that. What what, what was that? Because I, I just seen ego, and that's the truth. No, nah, you know what it is. I I, I was a prop. I was a proper 
I was a proper reptile. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I was a proper piece of shit. And what I'd do sometimes when I when I dab people off, however I tax them, sometimes I'd I'd con them or sometimes I'd tax them where I put something to them. But um, what I used to do, a lot of them, I'd say, "Oh, he's a piece of." So I'd send them pictures with the money. So I'd take pictures that people were saying, "Oh, he was." It's embarrassing. It, I, when they whole printed that, I was embarrassed by it. Do you know what I mean? Even though it was a bell end, I weren't that much of a bell end to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? But yeah. So you weren't taking yeah, pictures in front of them on social media? I, I, I probably, I, I, I remember I put one on Facebook and tagged the lad who erupt. Do you know what I mean? But but, one for your job. Yeah, the, that type of thing. And they're saying snake, so I'll put the money with the snake. He's, he's a snake, he's a snake, so I'll put the money with the snake. Yeah. To, to take the piss, it was a sarcastic dig yeah. at, at, at these kids who we had. Do you, do you understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. listen, it is what it is. I, I don't want what I don't, I don't what they don't. But there's a, there's so, some of my old mates or associates years ago who, who, who attacked Stephen from 2001, 2002. There's some who regret. There's people who fell out with. I wouldn't say we're enemies. It, it, it's, we're, we're older now. It's, it's forgot. It, it's done, whatever. But I regret it. And, and, and I think about it all the time. They were decent. Even though they were involved in what they involved in, they, they were decent kids and they were loyal kids. But what I done, I, I ventured with the rats of Liverpool. I went with the rats and I become a rat. Even not so long ago, years, um, 2014, something around that, these kids in Liverpool who have been mates with, these black kids, mixed race kids, uh, I was mates with them for fucking years. And I, I've ended up taxing them for 16 grand or something like that. I think six and ten or something like that. But they can fight like fuck. So they, 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 they put a fight, they, they went, nah, fuck that, we're not having it. But once you put pressure on them and started doing whatever, putting pressure on them in that way, mm. they backed down because they weren't that... They game. Went, they went, yeah. nah, the game with their hands, they'll the, 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 the punch your head in, but they're, um, they're not that guy when it comes to the other things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so and, and once we had kids going, putting pressure on them and doing whatever, they, they give in. Uh, and they paid, and I regret it, but when, when you're amongst the rats, it, it, it's just like years and years ago, 2003, I robbed this kid, who, 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 this fat kid who, who was mates with him, and I, I regret it. I think I robbed him for fucking 10 or 15 quid for a car. I think it was a BM or something at the time. And I, I regret it because he was a decent, loyal kid. But because I was with the rat at the time, you become who you surround yourself with. I was a fully fledged. So rat. yeah, bad company corrupts good character. Hundred um, percent. And, and, and there's no doubt about that. And there's many people who attacked. There's many people who attacked who were thinking, "Yeah, I'm fucking glad they did." Yeah. But there's people who attacked in Liverpool. You feel sly about? No, I, I wouldn't say sly, but I, I feel a cunt. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed about it, obviously, you know, because I was a robber, but. Before that, before I got involved with these rats, I, I went that I went that type so of kid. So how many gang members were they? What do you mean? So obviously you're not going in on your own. So you're connected with these. these and loads of times I tax people, I tax people on my own. Just on your or, or, or I tax people with these kids from London, these black kids from London. So you people. always worked with people out of town and nine times out of ten. So no, there, there was a time be when I I go with when I was with scousers, but we were only taxing when I was with the scousers, we were taxing people like. The, the last one I done with them kids who was going with was someone who was uh, put me a name in for something that I never done. So we we we, we napped him, I kidnapped him, took him to mine. That's what type of weirdo I was. We got him to mine and kidnapped him in where I lived, and we t- I took ten grand of him. But that's because his brother put my name in for something. Did you know a few kids from the South End? Did you ever come across a kid called Paul Simon Scally? Don't know him, no. No. But it, it, it's um, I sold it years and years ago. I sold a few things to people down there, but. It weren't really my my. I didn't really vent the, the black kids I mixed with, were, were Lon, Lon, London ways and yeah. South. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. but um, that was after two thousand and nine. Before before two thousand and nine, I was just I didn't really mix with many Aratanas apart from a few Asians. But uh, two thousand and nine afterwards, that's when I was mostly mixed with all the blacks and the Asians. Did you ever have that? Um, was you ever like in a position where you you you'd have to fucking really do some damage? You wanted to even have to kill them. Man, never, would, would never, you, would never. You, would you have done it though if you... If nah, if it, what, 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 what the fuck? Because even when we used to shoot people, we'd, we'd try and shoot them in the legs. Or, 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 but, but we didn't realise you didn't... You can still kill you, them. You can still kill yeah, someone. Yeah. I didn't realise because you were reckless. And, yeah. and, and that lad that shot in the sol- sh- shoulder, uh, the soldier who, who hit in the shoulder, I didn't, I think, fucking hell, a bit to the left, I, I, could, I could have killed him. And, and the, the judge said, the barrister said that in court, a bit yeah. to the left, he would have been dead. And I think... You don't realise when you're involved in that shit, you're reckless, you don't foresee the consequence to, to your action. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're pulling out a piece, you yeah, think you'll shoot someone, in, shoot someone in the leg, you'll get away with it, be yeah, all right. that's what you just think. Just give them a leg. Yeah. 
That's yeah. what you think. But you know, there's there's a kid who think he didn't like, and he's, he looks like he's been hit by sharks. Yeah, he looks he, look, he looks fucked. But it, it, it was a point blank type of thing, and, and I think now looking back, I think I could I could have killed that cunt. And and, and it, it's messy. It, it's not it's not good. And people don't think of the consequences to their actions. And I think a lot of the time when people kill people, they don't intend to do it. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And I think that's what kids need to be educated on. The consequences of, of what they're doing. Did you ever come... Did, was you ever subjected to any um, violence yourself? Did you ever... Yeah, obviously, I got stabbed and that's why we kidnapped that lad and took 10 grand of him. Go and tell us about that. Um, this lad was coming to my house. He was like building me trust type of thing. And uh, he got me he got me to an house on Tubru. He rang me and said, come and look at this. So thinking he was... Half my mate, not my mate, but I thought he had his sweet. Trust he sounds. I, I, he built me trust up for, for weeks, months, whatever. I went to the house, they just all brought guns to me, stabbed me to fuck. Um, but they all stabbed me, they didn't want to kill me because they all stabbed me in the legs. Do you know what I mean? But I thought I was dead because a few days before we kidnapped some half, some fellow who's half heavy from the pool who's got big up. We t- took him off the street. He ended up escaping because we got chased by armed response and he ended up escaping. But I thought they'd come to do me because of him. But it went. It was someone who put my name in for robbing a crop, or I never, I've never robbed a crop in my life. Not once. I don't know how to rob a crop. And I remember I went to look at a crop. Someone said, there's a crop there, go and have it. I went in. This was in near South Liverpool, and I couldn't even rob it. I thought, what the fuck do you do? It was all like leaves and fucking tents and mm. dangly bits of fucking... And I thought, <laughs> mate, it just baffled <laughs> too me. Too thought, messy. Yeah, so what I'd done, I just locked the door and went out. I thought, and I said, mate, I can't... He gave me the key. The, 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 I think he was a landlord or something, I don't know. Um, he had the key to the to the gaff or he was renting it or something and he wants a back door or someone but I said I haven't got a fucking cl-. and he went you just snip it I said mate I can't even snip me fucking toenails I'm not going to not going to even I, I've never robbed a crop in my life yeah. and I got I got stabbed bad um, for robbing there was about 10 of them they all put guns to me so uh, you know they, they never come and brought it to me like that yeah but you know I never done it I got stabbed for fuck all and that's why I ended up kidnapping that lad um, on Tubru and taking 10 grand of him because his brother put my name over that and I never done it. There was that 10, 10 grand in bangers? Yeah, 10 grand in cash. I went and picked the money up from uh, these snacks. But uh, if you, you're probably watching this, you'll probably watch it and that's the reason it happened. I, I'm not going to bullshit them. I've got no reason to lie. And, you know, but we're all older now, but it, 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 is, it is what it is. And, you know, most of the people I was mates with and mixing with are either dead or in jail. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But, you know, there's many things that I regret, but people have got to understand their actions have consequences. Yeah, that's that's it. That the actions have got consequences. So, what was you? You went away in two thousand and sixteen. What was that for? Um, You've done a lot of jail, haven't you? I, I've done two big centres, an eight and eight and a half, or biggish. Um, the two thousand and sixteen one was a brothel. I had in Preston. I'd run it for ten weeks, um, but the police had an operation on me. I think the operation was two years or something like that. Um, two thousand and fourteen, two thousand and sixteen, a brothel, but I run for ten weeks, and the other one was at. Um, I think where I was trying to look over 120 grand for some Asian kid lent to some other Asian woman in the community and it went wrong and I just got dragged into some bullshit. So how do, how do you run a brothel? What's a brothel? Uh, what what do you do? I, I'm more or less just giving the out. Like a pimp? It's like a no, pimp? That, that, and I, that's what it sounds like and, and, it, and it's, it's, it's a dirty name, it's a dirty stigma to have a pimp, do you know what I mean? Because you think of some fella on Sheer Road in, in a pink suit. Yeah. Some, some black fella on Sheer Road in a pink suit with a, with, with a top hat on. Yeah. And, in some, cad- wash, in, in yeah. some Cadillac, yeah. do you know what I mean? Nah, the, I, I was what I'd done. It, it, it was a fella and a, and, a, and a bird who was an escort who suggested the idea. So I said, okay, I've someone threw six grand in, I, I threw ten grand in. Um, and then we done it. We, we done all the house. We got a big boss house, jacuzzis, pool tables, bar and all the shit like that. And I run it for ten weeks and thought, nah, it's it's not it's not me. Was it flying me. life? Was it was? It, it was doing it was doing all right. But it went for me. I didn't like it. Fucking sex shells, don't it? Yeah, but it, it, drugs it, and sex. Yeah, it, it went for me. It just went. So we ended up shutting it down and living in the house. Do you know what I mean? But it went for me. It, I, I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. It went something more. It was something that I was said it'd do well, and it never done as well as we anticipated. But it done all right. It covered itself, and for ten weeks, that's what I done. And I ended up getting jail for something I done for ten weeks. I, I was the, one of the biggest mistakes. I've How made. did you recruit the women? So, uh, I don't know, just, pe- just people we know, and, and this this fella, this this. Uh, but these were these foreign, but these. Nah, they were all English, but this fella you, you used to send me them. He, he got nicked with me. This this uh, I think he was gay. This gay fella, he was like a gay 
uh, pimp brothel gay, guy. Yeah, he was a gay yeah. pimp. Yeah, one of them. But um, he was all right. But I used to think he was an all right fella. But he fucking, I don't know. He, he gave me these women and told me and did his business venture. And I thought, what the fuck? Sat in jail thinking he never even got jail and he was the main guy. Yeah. He was the he was the pimp who was supplying me the women. He, he gave me the business idea and I think, and then I'm sat in jail. Think, it usually the is. But like the judge, the judge was telling him to keep away from me. I'm a bad influence on him and I thought, he's the one who fucking got me into it. He's the one who gave me the business idea and and the girl who was working for us was. And I thought, wow. But it is what it is. I've done my punishment. I regret what I honestly regret what I've done. I regret it. And, and the, bl- the blackmail where we tried to recover the money, if it was money lent to the woman. She admitted she invested in Pakistan. I think 1.2 million quid she invested yeah. of all different people. Um, the money I was trying to collect was 120 grand out of that 1.2 million. But she admitted. But listen, it, it, I, I regret what I've done, what happened with her. I regret what happened. I regret it. I, I deeply regret it. It shouldn't have happened. I, and I'm genuinely fucking remorseful for it. Do you know what I mean? Whether people believe me or not, I am. I've got no reason to lie. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I regret w- what I've done. So you saved out your sentence. You've got like eight and a half years. You got that in 2016. <coughs> Is this the turning point in your life? Is this like you're thinking to yourself? Because I know, right? Hmm. I know when I'm sitting in a fucking shell and I'm reflecting and I'm thinking to myself, you know, this can't go any go on any longer. I can't live this way of life. I've had enough. And then I'm looking around and I think I'm getting a little bit older. And I want to start like being a benefit to the community. Yeah, obviously, but it, it was you know what, believe it or not, it was, it was a program that was televised in 2017 about an incident in Liverpool. Don't really want to say what, but a, a young kid was shot. So that was little boy blue. Yeah, it, yeah. Because that's, I, I, that's I, I, I didn't really want to mention it because I feel a bit of a cunt mentioning it. But um, that was the, the turning point in my life, and I thought, you know what, what the, what the fuck am I even entangled up in? So this is this is big. This to be, because so you've been involved in in gun manufacturing, pulling out pieces, shooting, firing firearms off, and you know reckless. You've admitted all reckless, this. I, I wouldn't say it was dangerous. It was reckless. So you, you you've admitted, you know, and you've you took ownership of this. So it, it could have been you could have been in that situation where you pulled out a firearm and done the exactly. exact same I, thing. And I always think about Wade Smith when he had the two guns on me. And I thought if I would have seen him doing, and I would have just been pulling out the bow with him like some fucking John Wayne kamikaze and just letting off. Mm. And I think that could have been. But do you think they knew that you were packing? Who the doorman? Yeah, well, I was putting pressure on 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 the mates over the water. I was putting pressure on these other doorman who were connected to them. So they had an idea. Yeah, they had an idea, but the the, the young one, the young son, who, who, who whose dad owned the clubs and uncle owned the club, he was a, he was a game cunt. Yeah, there was an instance in Wade Smith with him where. Two big doormen, two big heavy kids who own a security firm have had a run-in with him. And he stood his ground, so he's a game. He, he's game. He weren't just a divvy doorman who, who just all beat you up and arm wrestle you. He was a game bastard. He had mm, balls. Yeah. And, and, and I was scared. That's why I went and fucking armed myself up. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not afraid to say, oh, yeah, he's a divvy. And I, yeah. I, I don't work like that. He weren't a divvy. The, the kid was game. He had balls. Yeah. And that was that. And so what? So this 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 television programme, that's documentation of this... Young boy getting killed in Liverpool by a gun has kind of shows a hit home for you, hasn't it? Yeah, I just thought, what am, what, what am I even, even though when involved in that directly, I, I, I used to speak to Mason. I went my mate, but I spoke to him a couple of times when he's in strange ways. And I, I, is this, is this yeah, the Mason, the kid who done it? And yeah. I, I, I used to think that it was just a mistake. It's one of, I didn't see the severity of what the fuck he'd done until I watched that program. And when you're seeing it, man, it was heavy. It Did was you ever speak to him about, you know, did he ever speak to you about the, that case? Yeah, obviously he was speaking about the case. And did he have regrets? Did he, did he feel? Look, I, I, only he can say whether he's remorseful. Yeah. I can't speak on his behalf. And, Fair enough. You know, I, I don't particularly like him for what he's done, but he might he might be remorseful, and it's not for me to sit here and say he's not remorseful or he is. I don't know. I can't speak yeah. for him. And, but, nah, it was bad. It, it was heavy. And, and people ought to give... Be mindful of that. Like, the kid was a fucking kid. He, he, he was a victim. He was a he was a kid. He weren't involved in that shit. He, he weren't. Uh, and and when you watch that documentary, it, it's heavy. It, it, and and I think that was the turning point. I thought, nah, fuck this. So Is that the one with Stephen Graham? He played the role of the police officer. And I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I know it was Little Boy Blue, but yeah. I, don't, I don't even it know. Was, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I wrote to the fam to the charity connected to the family, and they've sent it to something else, and they've and then someone replied back to me and. From there, I've, ne- I've never turned back. I've been adamant on developing this program. I've got it developed now. We just need to implement it. Uh, I've got to run it. Uh, tell us about that. Tell us about what you're doing now in the community because you, you know, you, 
you do you you know you reformed 100 percent. you want to do a lot of positive things now well, in the community uh, uh, you want to benefit yeah the, what, what i want to do i want to get the kids out of gangs out of knife crime and out of fucking all the shit they're entangled up in because there's, there are there are no winners on it and i know i know kids down south and, and across the country we're doing 30s 35s and every one of them would if they if someone went to them today and said look we'll let you out of jail go and work in mcdonald's for the rest of your life they jump at that chance and these kids are thinking now oh, it's it's embarrassing to work in mcdonald's and you're you're, you're a divvy if you're working but all these heavy kids who were doing big jug big jail big census they would 100 percent get out and turn their lives around rather than be sat in jail because they're sat in jail for 35 years you know wanking 365 days a year or doing whatever they're doing Lending tuna and noodles off the neighbour. Yeah. It's it's degrading and, and, and you've got no mates in that world. The gangbangers don't have no friends and when you go to jail you don't look after you. So then you start relying on your great auntie and your and your nan for post loaders. It's fucking it's degrading. I've seen it many times. Heavy kids go and jail. Then you get addicted to that spice. Yeah, that, 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 that's another thing. But most of the kids I know aren't on that, but they, 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 they um, they're still relying on people for post loaders. The mates are nowhere to be seen. Do you know what I mean? So the skint, the sat in jail skint doing a thirty five. Yeah. And then they end up, their enemies from the rival gangs end up in jail with them. And then the next thing, they're all speaking. So what was the point in all what the fuck happened, in all the murders, in all the big censors getting given out, in all the, you know, in all the victims of the cases? What, what was, what, for what? What, yeah. what was at the end of it? You're fighting over the postcode, it's not even your postcode, it's the fucking, it's the Queen's postcode. Yeah. It, it's bullshit. It, it, it's absolute bollocks. So the programme we're doing, I want to implement, um, it's, it's diverting kids out of gangs and it's getting them into alternative activities and then it, it's it's doing there's practical work and classroom work and the program lasts for three months yeah so we need to pilot that in order to get funding it's 12 grand to pilot so i'm trying to raise the funds to pilot that obviously it's got to be legit there's one or two people who've approached me and said look i can get you the, i can get you the money to fund it but i can't it's got to be squeaky clean you know as tempting as it may be because I just want the programme implemented. It's got to be sweet clean. It's got to be... I've got to account for everything. My, my, my accounts... Are mo- it's not just because of that. I don't want to do any dodgy money anyway, but my accounts are monitored by the police. That's another thing. I'm on the strictest... Some of the strictest conditions in the country. On and it. that's down to terrorism kind of stuff, isn't it? Can you tell us I, a little I bit think, about that? Well, well, it was I think the Islamic kind yeah, of... It, it was, I, I honestly believe that it was influenced by the terrorists who I was supposed to be affiliated to. Now, Al Qaeda, ISIS, wh- wh- whatever it may be. Now, different set of groups. Now, I believe that's why I'm on these conditions. But it's not. A, it's th- there's something called a TPM, terror prevention uh, investigating, me- wh- whatever it is. But I'm not on that order. The order I'm on is a SCPO, Serious mm-hmm. Crime Prevention Order. But I can't use internet unless I notify the police. Um, I, I'm not allowed to use pay phones. I can't go on internet cafes. I'm fucking. I'm bad out of the whole of Lancashire, the county of Lancashire. I'm bad out of Southport. I'm not, uh, I don't even know what the fucking bad out of Southport for. <laughs> but even getting to Liverpool, even though I'm not bad out of Liverpool, even to try and do the interview with you was an eddy. Yeah. Uh, so we're here in Manchester yeah. at, at the minute because we did have a plan twice in Liverpool. Correct, and, yeah. and you got the stoppers put on it. Yeah, to, uh, effectively, yeah. But 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 it went. Listen, I, I, I could have went and said, nah, I'm gone, but. It, well, why you know if they're not happy with it i, I don't want to go against what they're yeah. saying do you understand what i'm saying so but you, Lang- you, you conform and now to yeah they, 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 listen you've you, you've got to and i, and I, I don't want to I, I want to demonstrate change i want to show them that look i've changed and i'm happy to comply with the rules i'm at the scpo mm. i don't think there's anyone i think there's one guy in london who's, who's on conditions this Anjim charity from the lawyer i was speaking to is that Anjim charity guy who, who was arrested for terrorism or whatever he's on similar conditions to me but i've never met anyone who's on these conditions and even the barrister who done my case this qc matthew sheriff he said there's no way this will get past the so is it, is it like you know you you, you got your mappers is this like a, a crazy nah, it's not souped to, up mapper it's or not to do with mapper it, it, it's it's a scpo but it's the most stringent scpo that the barristers have ever seen they've never seen it and, and he's a qc now the, the barrister and how, how long are you on this for five years but it's it's nothing to do with probation or prison it, it's a civil order passed by a criminal court do you know what i mean so if you breach it you get five years and in this jail. is due is this due to like their thoughts that you were affiliated with al-qaeda and isis i, I, and I, I honestly believe it was influenced by the, 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 the I've, I've been alleged to be i wouldn't say connected but affiliated to, to terrorists and, and and so on do you know what i mean so and terrorist groups now 
I believe that order, and my barristers believe this order was... I, I can't say definitively, and I'm not going to suggest this, I'm not making allegations or accusations against anyone, yeah. but my legal team believe that that influenced the implementation and the severity of the order. I think if a win uh, said to be affiliated to terrorism or terrorists, then I still would have got an order, but it wouldn't have been nowhere as severe. Mm. And, and do I think the authorities were wrong to pass the order? No. I think it was fully justified, uh, uh, and, and I can't really... I'm not criticising the authorities, I'm not criticising the courts for passing it, because I yeah. think it was justified, because I was, I was a fucking nuisance, and the people who was connected with it, knowingly or not knowingly, I'm not saying I knew they were all terrorists and, and, and I, I engaged them for that. So sometimes you don't know people are terrorists. Do you understand? I'm just speaking hypothetically here, so yeah. I, I don't want everyone thinking, oh, I'm a terrorist sympathiser or whatever. That's not the case, but a lot of people I was mixing with uh, did turn out to be something what I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Effectively, do you know what I mean? That's the world you're in. Yeah, it is, yeah, it's the world you're in. But uh, what, what doesn't look good to me is years before, uh, I, I was involved with Al-Qaeda people and... Uh, you know, uh, so what, what did you change your religion by any chance, or was that look, I, I'm, I'm alleged I, as well? Nah, but look, it, it's alleged. Was you a Muslim? Was you this? Was it? Look, what, what? I believe in God. I, I'm, am I religious? I believe in God. That's as far as. Mm, I, that, so you've got a you've got yeah. a belief. I, I believe in God. That, that, that's that. Yeah. I, 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 I fear God, and, that, and that's you know that's as far as I go. And people ask me all the time, are you Muslim? Are you this? Are you that? Are you, are you, are you Jewish? Or this, it's irrelevant as to what I am. So yeah, because you changed your name to Sakhiris. Yeah, I like it, it that fucking it, 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 That's actually like Jewish. It's got Jewish heritage. Um, but it's... it's Sakhiris, yeah. The, the, Sakhiris, yeah. The, the, the reason the papers have changed that, and I know people say, oh, it means Hitman, that's bollocks. Assassin, that's yeah, what it's it means. Bullshit. It, it, that's because the... the Sakhiris is... Yeah, but uh, if you look at the original meaning of it, it was Jewish, the Sakhiris. But the Colombians distorted it. It's just bollocks, and it means spider as well. African spider, and in all the reports that they done, he went, "Oh, it means assassin," but they never said once it means spider. It, 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 it's what suits their narrative, and um, yeah, the, the 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 reason I changed that. Part of the reason was to facilitate my criminality because I I set up numerous companies and I didn't want the business people I was mixing with because I went half legit, even though I was still involved in organised crime. I went legit. I went running around with guns. I weren't involved. In, do you get what I'm saying? So. I couldn't have business people when I was going on business meetings, Googling me and going, I'm going, you, you, you've been away for shooting a soldier and manufacturing guns. So that was the reason, you know, McGrath is, is a name, what, what what's connected to me anyway, do you know what I mean? So it's like a distant family type name. So I adopted the that. The yeah. yeah. And, and, and then um, the Sicarius thing was, I was actually sat with a Jew and, and, and the name just come up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then we started the company called Sicarius uh, Risk Management, Sicarius Protection or Sicarius Risk Management, whatever it was. So that's how I adopted the name. But people are thinking, oh, we think she's a Sicario or Colombian. I can't even spell Colombia. <laughs> bollocks. But people make their own assumptions and, and they just add their own bits on it. It's bullshit. It's absolute bollocks. But I, cha- I, I changed my name. I adopted that name from then. And, and But it was mostly for business yeah. purposes. You know what I'm saying? So that was just just that that's that sums that up then 100 yeah. percent. but people take it out of context and go oh he's named himself after the colombian bollocks oh. absolute bullshit <laughs> crock of shit well that's that's clear that so now today you know I, I know a lot of people who watch youtube or these podcasts and see reformed criminals mm. right on a platform and their initial response is Oh, everyone's doing that. Everyone's fucking wants to be a podcast. That everyone wants to tell a story. Everyone who's who's done this, but you've got to you've got to have a real positive kind of motive to change. Uh, you've and got the agenda's like, got to be yeah, true. You've, so got, you've got to have passion. And what I'm saying is, yeah, I'm not criticizing other people who change, but what I'm saying, y- you get. Oh, why do you want to change? I know you said it's because of you know you you kind of hit home, but it's like. What do you want to achieve in the outcomes in the long uh, run? You want to get this pilot program uh, yeah, going, it, and is it in Manchester that you're starting it? Uh, it's in the northwest, yeah. But yeah. it's twelve grand to run the pilot for three months, and once the pilot is it, then we can get funding from local and central governments and and other private invest uh, other sponsors and so on. But look, you're taking this into schools, colleges, universities. Yeah, it, 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 it's gonna be, it's gonna be in the community, but we also gonna be doing talks in prisons and schools and colleges and so on. But that that's separate. But as I say, going back to the offenders who who, who, who who say they've changed, I'm not going to identify anyone specifically, but 
the preaching anti knife crime, anti this, anti that. But on the same side, the, the, they're also doing videos saying, I'm going to beat this up. It's bollocks. You're either one or the other. You're on one side of the fence or the other. And yeah, there's a lot, so you, you yeah. come across a lot of people who. 100%. Um, yeah. They say they've changed, but they haven't changed. They've changed a little bit, but they haven't changed as much as they ought to. But I'm definitive. They've changed to, to what suits them. To what suits them. But, yeah. but they're still aggressive. They're still hostile. And they're still. Right, I'm, com- I'm I'm com- I'm coming to yours, and I'm gonna do you in, and I'll, I'll wait outside. Mate, you haven't changed. That's bullshit. But I'm saying, hundred percent, I've changed. There's no doubt about that. And no matter, people are gonna criticize me. People will criticize you for having me on and say he's a grass, he's a police informer, he's a terrorist, he's a fucking bollocks, mate. The, the people, people are quick to make assumptions and, yeah. uh, and stigma and attach to other people, but. Look, what it was. Oh, yeah, well, well I, I'm only a host. I'm but just, yeah, I'm just, I've just got a platform mm. and I'm bringing an audience. Uh, Definitely, but what I'm saying is, I'm admitting, audience's I was a, view. I, I'm admitting I was a piece of shit. There's no doubt about that. I was just, I was a fucking absolute scumbag. I had the models of a, you know, I had the models of a rat. So I never had no models, in fact. I was a scum. So what's your, how do you see yourself today? I mean, would you would you class yourself as a scumbag today or nah, a I'm, rat? I'm, 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 I'm far from it because, one, I'm helping people in the community uh, and I'm doing... What what a voluntary helping people as much as I can parents you know victims of crime pe- yeah. people but even people in prisons I'm I'm helping there's a lot of people who are sat in prison whose families have rang me for advice and said look we, we need help with this we need it. mostly prison matters like getting them to cut these or stuff like that and, and and I put them in touch with top lawyers or I'll help them or I'll I'll, I'll try and speak on their behalf and, and so on so on and you know so I'm, I'm helping people in all different walks of life. You understand what I'm saying, but I, w- I want to get this program implemented, and I want to be helping kids. I want to, you know, anyone's kid, anyone's family member can fall victim to knife crime or violent crime, and until it happens to you, you're not going to realise the severity and the impact of it. Now, I, okay, I, I was a piece of shit, I was this and that, and I've got this fucking horrible past. But if I can help, you've kids, got lived experience. That's yeah, what you've got. 100%. You've got lived experience. You've got that knowledge and that awareness now yeah, and understanding to but, go look. But, but not only that. The kids have enge- I've get engaged with over 100 kids on, on, on when we were trying to test the concept. And every kid engaged with me. Everyone said they want to work with me. The parents, 100% behind it. So it's the approach I've got. We're not po- I'm not going to be politically correct when I'm saying, no. Like, I get a lot of shit off youth workers, a lot of criticism, saying you can't call them little cunts. Because I said to this kid, you little cunt or you little bastard or whatever. And he goes, you can't speak to them like that, mate. They're fucking carrying guns. What do you mean you can't speak to them like that? They, they are little bastards. And they, weren't, they weren't brought up on the playground. They weren't brought oh, up on the mother care. 100%. You know I mean? But these youth workers haven't got a clue. And, and the, treating, the last youth centre I went to, there's two kids at the back fucking weighing each other in. And then the parents end up, and they, want to weigh the, they end up wanting to weigh the parents in. And I, I intervened. So nah, it's not going to head. You've done them in now. Just give it a miss. But if I wouldn't have intervened, the mum and dad would have got fucking weighed in. And the youth workers have just stood there powerless. And I'm thinking, you aren't fit. You aren't competent enough to reform these kids and he, he, there's a lot of black youth he, workers yeah. from London who were saying no no you, 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 you know what have you got for black youth mate? it doesn't make a difference if you're black white Asian it doesn't make a difference what colour you are what race you are this programme is, is for any colour of any racial and they're going but what about equality like, what do you mean mate uh, well what if the, well, what if it's the non-binary fucking multi what are you what, you know what are you talking about do you identify as a fucking wheelie bin or what identifies what you want for all I care? I, it's n- if you're a kid who's involved in that type of shit, yeah. gangs, knife crime, gun crime, then I want to be there to help. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's irrelevant of what colour you are, what. But you get these youth workers that go, but what about this? But what? Mate, fuck off. Yeah, like if you say you like you, you, uh, you say you like apples to these guns and they go, why do you hate oranges? Mm. No, they, they're just they're, they're, they're fucked. Is it, yeah, it's, it's, a fucking, it's a bizarre fucking time we're living in, isn't it? It is hundred percent. But 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 these youth workers haven't got a clue. And if the, if they did have the solution, they'd be applying it now. And knife crime would be reducing, gun crime would be reducing, violent crime would be reducing. But they can't. They're scratching their heads. So what do you think the answer is to, you know, end like the war on gun no, crime, knife you're ne- crime? You're never going to end knife crime and gun crime. You're never going to end it. But what I'm saying is the program I've got, I've developed. I've been working on it since 2019. So three years, the program I've developed, I'm a hundred percent certain it will reduce it significantly in the areas. We're, we're aiming for a seventy-five percent success rate. So seventy-five people, like seventy-five percent of people that come through the program, out of every hundred, we're going to reform seventy-five percent. I'm going to not going to reoffend. Do you know what I mean? I, and we're going to be interviewing the parents at the start of the program and at the end of the program. 
we're also going to get an outcome evaluation conducted of it, the pilot scheme. So all the parents are going to be saying, yeah, little Tommy was a cunt, he was running around with guns, he was fucking doing this, he yeah. was doing that. And then that's the first interview, the end interview, they're going to be saying, little Tommy's in in a work placement and, and, and he doesn't no longer mix with these and he doesn't do what he's doing, he's not getting brought on by the police. So that's one way we're going to demonstrate success. And the other way, we've got someone to do an independent evaluation on the outcome of it, uh, how successful our approach is mm. in doing so. And, and, and look, I, I'm a... I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm intelligent, but I know what's going to work, and, and I put aspects of it into practice. When I used to get kids into, into gangs or recruit them or whatever you want to describe it as, I'm using similar methods to that, and similar methods what the Al-Qaeda use with me, I'm using in this rehabilitation, rehabilitation program. It doesn't mean I'm going to be fucking recruiting them into terrorism, but it, I'm using similar methods that were used... I know, I know, it, it, I know how easy it is, mate. What, what it is, look, to get these kids into gangs, it's manipulation. To get them out of gangs, it's manipulation. So you've got to manipulate them out of gangs. But professionals are telling me, psychologists, oh, you can't manipulate these kids, mate. They, these aren't good kids who are going to college and uni. These are little cunts who are running around the street, stabbing, shooting, and causing fucking mayhem. So it is a, it is an art of manipulation, and you've got to master that art in order to be successful in rehabilitating these kids. Mm, because uh, uh, you know. Uh, you said like you talk about the Al Qaeda and, and the Islamic kind of feel. I know it's a gang. I, it's a gang. I was when I was in Bangkok. I was as on a shahada, and I done it because you know I was hungry and I was you know they were feeding me and it was great. And then you know I was in with a great crowd and they were they were all spiritual. There was mm-hmm. unity collectively as a um, as a group. We were we we were we felt supported. There was not once by the people that I was like around at that time trying to influence me influence me into doing anything um, that was like sort of borderline terrorism until I met this one guy from Iran that was saying you know would it be would a fight like uh, would it go and become you know I know what you're saying but the he, jihad he, yeah he would have likely been Shia Shia, Shia they're mostly Shia in, in Iran but Look, in 2007... The Holy War, yeah. they wanted to start, get, start, start to encourage me to start getting involved. Yeah, I know what, what you're what saying. The fuck? It, it, it Big occasion, that you want me to go and fight yeah, on the front that. line? No, not happening. It, it, not it, happening. It, it, it happened to me, but what I'm saying is the, the, the Muslims in the prison system, most of the high-security prisons are run by the Muslims. And I'm not criticising them for that, because they, 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 they've got unity, they've got solidarity, they've got respect for each other. Uh, uh, these, they're the brothers to one another. It's a fame, isn't it? Yeah, do you understand? But yeah. the brothers, and, and it's loyal, and they'll stand shoulder to shoulder with each other. And and that's what society lacks. I'm not saying everyone become a terrorist, and everyone, uh, I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm, I'm applying principles from different parts of my life. And so like a family oriented group. Yeah, y- y- so you've y- gone y- from a gang to a group of uh, people that can kind well, of convey. I'll the gang, yeah, but what yeah. I'm saying is w- we need to apply particular principles in communities in where there's cohesion amongst people in communities and you stand shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. Now, you don't have to be a terrorist to do that. You, you can apply the same principle in a community. You can apply the yeah. s- same... You well, know, I, I always say, you know, if you put what you did into your using of drugs and you put that plan of action into like a business mind. 100%, just like a drug dealer. The, 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 the bus- a drug dealer is a business. Yeah. You know, so crime is a business. You know, many crimes is a business. So if you, if you apply, it's transferable skill. And the skills I've got from my criminality and whether it was being groomed by Al-Qaeda or gangs or wh- whatever it may be, I'm transferring those skills and that knowledge and that expertise into getting kids out of gangs and saving them. And long term, yeah. people will be grateful for it. It will no. work 100%. There's no mm. doubt about it. There's nothing on offer like, like what I'm doing in the country. And once it's implemented, the pilot, then I, I anticipate we're going to be getting funded and we're going to no, expand and I wish you well on that. And I hope people who out there, maybe there's someone out there who's watching this that might be kind of interested in supporting that. Well, there's, a a, whole. there's a lot of people watching. There's a lot of police and ex-police officers. There's a lot of psychologists, criminologists. There's a lot of other organisations, youth organisations that want to see. I've had meetings with many of them and, and they say, look, we want to see this pilot if it works. Yeah. If it does, we're interested. It might not, people, it, for all they know, it might not work. So that's why they don't want to put their names to it now. Well, that's what they want to do. So yeah. I'm but I'm confident it will work, 100%. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Well, that's, that's good. I'm glad you're confident in that. I, I, and I wouldn't, e- even on my Twitter account, I, I wouldn't be screaming from the rooftops that I've got the solution. Yeah. And then it fails because I'd look an absolute cunt. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? And the scrutiny I'm under, you know, the, the monitoring and the management that I'm under at the moment, I, I'm not in a position to fail. So you believe I, in I, yourself, I, yeah? I, listen, 100%. There's no doubt in my mind it will work. Yeah, that's great. There's no doubt. And and to run the parlour for three months, 
it's, wi- it's worth raising the 12 grand to run for, run for three months because you know it'll be expanded nationally so someone from southern ireland's been in touch with me uh, uh and saying they want to do something over the over there do you know what i mean so and then the media got in touch with me from over there but so if it works in england i, I want to expand it and i want to apply the same principle in ireland i don't know if it works in ireland because i don't understand the gang structure over in ireland the but, but yeah. there's, a, there's a possibility if it works in england I know 100% percent it'll work in England, so then there's a possibility it may work in Ireland. So then we'll, we'll, we'll trial it over there. But I can't say it'll definitely work in Ireland, as I can't say it'll work in Scotland, because I don't understand the gang structure of Scotland. Whereas I do in England, and I know 100% percent without any shadow of a doubt it will work. So Sicaris McGrath, formerly known as Andy Harrington. Yeah. We've come to the end of the podcast. Loved it, every bit of it. Right, and what I usually say to um we guessed at the end is the is the any pairs of wisdom now what would you say right to a young sicarius i can't get that fucking right are you, so you're a young person just anyone right, anyone, yeah just you're, a, you're a young, young a young a young you yeah. coming through the doors of life what would you say to to you now have you seen you coming through the doors of life and knowing what you were going to become what yeah, would you say look, to yourself in crime there's no winners yeah you, you, you might have a good few years you might have a good i don't know two years three years five years even a decade but it always comes crumbling down. And the way society, years ago, it was easy to commit crime, it was easy to make yeah. money. But these days, it's not sustainable. And the authorities will come for you. The NCA, the police, the government. You know, the, there's this particular individual in Dubai, the Irish individual, and the government are all over him. The government, loads of governments want him. Loads of authorities want him. Do you know what I mean? Because he's, he's got that much wealth. Well, he's alleged to have that much wealth. You think he's from Ireland. But... You get too powerful, the government will take you down. But even if you're not at that level, the police and the NCA will come for you. Uh, and unless you're some fucking fly mo robber, unless you're robbing garden sheds, fly mows, then no one's asked. But you're just a, you're just gonna be a fucking crackhead. I'm not, I'm not trying to pull crackheads down, but who wants to rob sheds? If you go any higher than that, drugs or organised crime. No crackheads. Yeah. <laughs> nah. No crackheads are um, a harmed yeah. Yeah. during this video. Yeah, by no the way, no crackheads are offended during this yeah. video. But yeah. I'm saying, once you get into serious organised crime. It's not sustainable. Hundred percent, it's not sustainable. Gang banging, you finish. You're never going to make money. I was doing it myself, and I was always skint. Even though I would generate money, I was always skint. I never had a fucking penny. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Gang banging, you can't make money while you're shooting each other. No. And when you're not making money, it's going to come to an end. And when they come and get you, the police, they'll they'll take your money. They'll take your fucking Balenciaga socks, and they'll take your beard socks. Do you know what I mean? In fact, they'll take your beard's night socks. They'll take everything from you on this proceeds of crime. It's heavy. They'll take you. They'll take you. Fucking your kid's iPad. They'll take everything off you. Yeah. So the the, the, the pockets are gone. Right? The pockets are heavy. Hundred percent. It used to be called DTO, but now it's called Proceeds of Crime Act, and it used to be just for drugs, but now it's for any type of crime. Yeah. But even if you haven't been nicked for something, they can come to you and say, "Well, you know, wh- wh- where's your money come from?" And they'll take it. Hundred percent. And and they'll go, "Oh, it's in my nan's name." They'll look into your nan, and, and they'll get your nan in a police interview, and your nan will fucking shit herself and say, yeah. oh, "Okay, it's not mine." It's bullshit. You, you you can't lord the money. You can't do nothing. You can't. Crime is not sustainable. You, be, you rather than hustle on the streets every day of your life, go to union, hustle for three years or five years at university, and go and get 50, 60, 70 grand a year, legit, where you don't have to look over your shoulder. Yeah. As opposed to being a criminal and hustling for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years and end up in jail, skint. Go to union, hustle for three years, four years, five years, and, and, and go into a job of 50k a year. And when you're a criminal, you've got no extra strategy because you love the money too much. And what else can you go into? Oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll just sell smack for a year and put it into a bit of bollocks. It doesn't happen, it's not practical. In theory, it sounds great. Yeah. We'll, we'll sell smack for a year and then we'll go legit. It's, bo- it's absolutely never heard so yeah, much bullshit, so but it, 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 demonstra- fantasy, it, it? it demonstrates the intelligence of the, of the divvies that say it. And prison, when you go to prison, it's a shit hole. You've got around the same gobshites every day talking the same shit. And it's all a retard. I shouldn't be saying retards in case there's any people who are watching it a bit. But um, all, all the idiots cling together like a big gym. And then they, they're the main firm in the jail. Yeah. And outside, they're absolute fucking idiots. You know what I mean? I, I remember I got cracked by some, some divvy in jail. And he's the, he's the, he was the worst clown ever. And I think, mate, if that was outside, I would have put your whole fucking family in witness protection. But that, that was when I was a, when I was a cunt you know, years and years ago. It was some fucking daft smackhead in Walton. Mm. And you think, they're the boy in jail. 
them daft smackheads who, who, who you're chasing, whatever, when you're out on the streets, they're the boy in jail. Yeah, they're doesn't, they're taking doesn't matter who you are on the house. You know, exactly. you could be a legend outside, but when exactly. you're inside, mate, you're all in the same listen, fucking boat. And I, I learned that. And when you can't fight, you're fucked. Yeah. Trust me. So, listen, prison ain't the, ain't the place. It's shit. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got people whose parents are dying. My dad died in jail when, in 2005, and I couldn't even go to his funeral because they were saying you're too dangerous and the Asians will escape you. And, just bollocks and, and you sat in jail at your dad's funeral uh, you can't even go it's, it's, not, it's, it's not it's not the future it's shit it's sad that you have to lose your missiles and, and all 100% stuff, but you know the craze went to days but they wouldn't let me go to mine yeah. uh, but listen prison crime isn't the way yeah, okay brilliant and with that I wish you all the best mate thank right, you very much well, if there's anyone that's sensible that wants to come on board with this programme I know about my passion I know people will be sceptical but it's 100% genuine and, and, you know... And I'll put all your information within the description yeah. so if anyone wants to get in touch with you on Twitter, what other accounts have you got? Yeah, the, the, it's mostly my Twitter or my email. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, be, I'll put your tw- your Twitter and your email accounts. But there's a company what's going to be running the programme. Do you know what I mean? So the, the company's going to be managing the program. It's going to be managing the pilot. Send me that. Send me that link, yeah. and then I'll put all all that information within the description. And and hopefully we um, you can get you up and running. Yeah, and get this pilot working. And and the critics, the people who are going to criticise me, say grass this. What well, look? But well, have you got nothing better uh, and nothing better to say? Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Brilliant. Well, it's good speaking to you anyway. Thank you.